Welcome back to the channel. My name is Samuel Barlas. Here we talk about networking and cybersecurity. First things first, opinions expressed in this video are mine and not necessarily past, present, or future employers. Um, just keep that in mind. So jumping into Fortinac and talking about Fortinac, I want to start with why, uh, why I'm making this video, what we're here to talk about today, and then we'll jump into the data sheet here in just a second. Um, so I was digging through a lot of the study material, the training material, the administrative guide. Of course, the data sheet um, is on the list of materials I've been going through as well. And I realized that a lot of that material, in my opinion, uh, was very focused on the minute details, right? It was focused on the trees, not the forest. And so um, to really wrap my head and, and understand the entire functionality of NAC, I had to do a whiteboarding session, right? I went to the whiteboard, I started writing out all these little pieces of information, correlating them, putting them together, uh, and trying to come out with, you know, hey, when I plug in a device, what are the steps? What are the phases? And we're going to talk about three different phases that I've um, kind of categorized different uh, pieces of Fortinac. What are the phases that it has to go through from I plug into a device to we take action and make a network change, right? And so we're going to talk about that, kind of zoom out a little bit, look at the forest, um, because I think the admin guide and the training material does a really, really good job of digging into the nitty gritty details. But uh, I'm not so happy with what it did um, in terms of looking at the whole forest, looking at the whole thing holistically. So I'm trying to, to pass on that knowledge that it took me a few hours to kind of put together and uh, figure all out. So hopefully I can distill that down to just a few minutes uh, and help you guys really wrap your head around Fortinet's uh, architecture and how it works. So a few key points from the data sheet, um, you know, just to kind of set the stage about Fortinac. Um, so it's a centralized architecture. We're going to be working out of band if we're using Fortinac. So we're not going to be in line. Uh, we don't have to have a distributed architecture like some other NAC solutions have. We don't have to have nodes at each site. Um, and uh, another benefit there is because of that, Fortinac does not have to um, your network's not going to rely on Fortinac to function in its current state. It's only going to leverage Fortinac for network changes. So if Fortinac is getting maybe rebooted for a update, maybe there's some sort of network outage or other kind of outage that makes Fortinac unavailable, then uh, we're not going to have our whole network come to a, a, a halt, right? We're just not going to be making those changes that we're leveraging Fortinac for. Um, which of course, you know, we don't want for a long period of time, but a short outage uh, is not going to, to bring our network to its knees. So we can collect data in a ton of different ways. Again, the admin guide, the training material covers this in crazy good detail. Um, so I'll leave that up to those resources. Uh, and then just kind of from a visual perspective, that centralized NAC deployment, right? We don't have to have anything at each individual site. We can have a centralized NAC appliance. Now, if we're talking globally distributed networks, we can use a Fortinac manager and have maybe uh, geographic deployments of Fortinac so that, you know, they don't have to send network traffic across the different continents and such um, to get that information from Fortinac. Uh, but again, you, we don't necessarily have to. We can deploy one appliance, whether it's physical or virtual, and that's all we really need. In terms of network support, it's pretty vendor agnostic. There's lots of different uh, vendor networks, uh, whether it's switches, wireless, um, security, so like firewalls that Fortinac natively supports. Now keep in mind, uh, there are open standards that Fortinac also supports. Uh, 802.1x is supported. It is not relied upon, so you can use other technologies outside of 802.1x, but you can use that standard. Um, you can leverage it as well as other things like SNMP MAC traps from your switches when a new device connects um, and, and lots more. So it's very, very flexible there. This is not an exhaustive list. This is a list of things that Fortinet has verified in their labs that it does function properly with. Um, but more than likely, you'll see a lot of release notes and other things with other vendors that have been added over time that maybe <laughs> the, uh, the marketing team doesn't want to to list in this particular document. It may add a couple of pages if we go and, and add everything. So um, with that, you know, it's pretty vendor agnostic again. So you can leverage the technologies you have today. Uh, maybe if you're in an interim state, maybe if you're in a multi-vendor environment where you're transitioning from you know, one vendor to another, 
more than likely Fortinac is going to work in those scenarios as well and not, not hold you back there. So I want to jump in here to kind of the three-phased approach. And I remember a lot of things with acronyms. So I went ahead and added an acronym when I was thinking through how to present this. Um, so I use DCA. Um, so if you're a finance nerd like me, dollar cost averaging. Uh, but no, we're not talking about money today. We're talking about Fortinac. So what does that mean in terms of Fortinac? Uh, that's how I uh, describe the three different phases. So first, um, we're talking about discover, right? So really here at phase one, we're going to be discovering devices. Phase two, we're going to be talking about correlating. So we're going to correlate some information together. And then phase three, we're actually going to take action, right? We're going to apply a policy. Um, uh, if policy started with an A, that'd be a great, a great choice for the third one. Uh, but in this case, in order for me to kind of remember this, DCA was a good uh, acronym for me. Discover, correlate, and action. Let's dig in a little bit to each phase here. So really, what we're discovering is devices. So we're going to leverage... Uh, we're going to leverage maybe our um, Active Directory infrastructure to uh, get our users. Uh, but when devices come online, we need to discover those devices, right? So we can uh, define devices. We can register devices. Uh, those are some of the things we do at kind of that phase one. We're also going to tag our hosts. This is extremely important. So we're going to be able to leverage these tags later on uh, in phase two so that we can make some more informed decisions based on some complexities potentially in the devices that we are discovering. So there's lots of different ways we can do discovery. Uh, and I won't dig into those. Again, there's lots of different methods. You can go through that in the training material or the administrative guide. It'll go through all those different options there. Um, but really, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to use those technologies to tag our host with something like um, maybe a type, maybe a role. Uh, all these are device, right? Device type, device role, um, etc. So then we're going to take that information. We're going to go into phase two. So phase two is how we're going to leverage the information from our device discovery and maybe from our user discovery. Again, we're going to correlate that together. We're going to correlate our info. And um, then we're going to be able to uh, attach the correlated information to a policy. So essentially what we're doing here is we're taking that information, whether it's user information, whether it's device info, such as, right, type, uh, what was the other one, role, Right, so we're leveraging the information that we've pulled from our device discovery, from our user discovery, maybe. And we can choose which things we want to actually use. Right, again, here we're just categorizing, we're just getting information. And here we're going to choose what information we want to use in order to make the decision. And in the phase three, right, we're making that decision, we're taking that action. Okay, so you know, policies, there's a few different policies. I'm going to just talk about network access policy because it is the most commonly used. Um, but there are some other ones as well. Again, the administrative, the training material, um, administrative guide, excuse me, and the training material go into a nice nitty gritty detail. So if you want to get all the details there, I'm just going to talk about the one policy for the sake of example. Um, and if you want to dig in more, feel free to, to uh, jump into those resources or reach out to me and I'm happy to, happy to help. So uh, when we actually go to take action, we're going to leverage two things. First, we're going to have a user slash host profile. So if I didn't say it, which it looks like I didn't, um, all this information that we're putting together, we're going to box up a nice pretty package with a bow on it. I'm not going to draw a bow because uh, it would not look good. And we're going to call this a user slash host profile. All right, so all of these definitions together go into that user host profile. So what we're doing is we're saying, hey, if the device, 
you know, maybe matches this type, this role, and the user matches this information, and this, and that, and all these other things together. Okay, here we've defined the device, right? If it matches XYZ method, I'm going to put that here. We're using multiple methods, maybe. Uh, we can use vendor OUI, we can use uh, SNMP queries, tons of stuff. Again, I'm not going to go into it. We're going to use a method in order to get information. And then here, we're going to use our tags, right? So we've defined what means the tag here. Then we defined which tags together equal the profile. And then we're going to take that profile and we're going to add it with a policy. Uh, in this example, I believe uh, we're going to talk about the network access policy, which may change your VLAN, right? What VLAN is it assigned to? So, but there's really those two things associated at uh, phase three here. We're going to associate this information here, correlated information, with our policy. And I'm just going to put policy over here for the sake of completion, even though you probably knew I was going to write that before I did. So really, we're using methods to categorize devices. We're using tags to correlate that information. We're correlating the tags, really. And then we're taking action with our policies here at the third phase. So uh, just brief again, kind of the way that I remember it, DCA, uh, dollar cost averaging, if we're talking about money. But if we're talking about Fortinac, it's discover, correlate, and then take action. Thank you for viewing. Feel free to reach out with any questions or comments. I'd be happy to uh, help you guys out.